Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Strider, Spirit of Vengeance. Movie thoughts. So near the end, we find out that apparently ninjas are of the devil. Seriously, those are ninjas guarding the right for, you know, the devil. Or maybe they're not ninjas, or at least they're the worst frickin' ninjas in the history of ninjaism, because what self-respecting ninja would actually give Moreau that kind of opportunity to just go on in there? But just in general, you know, anyone affiliated with the devil in this film is a horrible guard, you know, when mother character has to, you know, the, the Roma one, has to rescue Danny at the quarry or something like that, she does so with ease. Sure, there's a guard that, you know, discovers her afterwards, but, you know, she wasn't stopped on the way in. The one point where I actually sort of cared and got a little bit into it you know, actually in a, on an emotional level, other than just thinking, huh, that looks kind of badass, or, you know, laughing at the film, was when Ryder, or Blaze, really, when he isn't the Ryder anymore, reaches for Danny, and, you know, Danny is now so consumed by the devilness in him that he stops Blaze, and, you know, I was actually for a second there, thinking, oh, how are they gonna, excuse me, get out of this one, you know, but, yeah, so, during the rite, I guess the, everyone, you know, attending this prestigious event must have been really embarrassed to see that everyone else wore the same thing that they chose to wear, you know, what are the odds, and, yeah, considering how many people die in that short sequence, you know, the, the all of them being turned to ash from when Danny overpowers the devil inside. And, you know, gives a hot air kiss to the rider, or the, the to Blaze, giving him the rider back. You know, he... Yeah, he whips the chain, and plenty of people die, and just before that, Moreau shot a bunch, and I don't know, I can't speak for everyone in the theater, but I didn't care. You know, I'm sorry, but when that many people die, I should care at least a little bit, and it's not that Neville Dean Taylor can't do that, because they did it in Crank. You know, actually, less people die in Crank, but when people die in Crank, either of them, you, you know, you care. Mostly. In in some way, you know, you have a kind of reaction. This film actually managed to explain better than the first film the, like, powers and just the, the basic way the rider works, but like in the first one, it's just in these awkward exposition dumps of, you know, one character explains it to another and yeah, you know, but at least they used the ability to transform a vehicle, you know, by the rider's touch decently enough, you know, and one fight that sort of got you engaged was between the transformed Kerrigan and the rider there near the end, on top of cars. Excuse me, and, you know, the decaying of the glass. My girlfriend and I debated if, you know, you know, that was really possible, if what he was doing was rotting stuff, and if glass rots, and I came to the conclusion that I don't care, because it looked kind of cool. And, yeah, it, it worked for me. But, yeah, you know, that fight was actually not too bad, but then it just ended, you know, way too fast. I'll talk more about the rotting Kerrigan. The devil barely did anything in this movie. I guess it's that whole thing of, you know, oh, he, like... He's, you know, worn out this body, and 
yeah, I guess he missed some beauty sleep or something. I don't know. It. I get that he was going to be more powerful if he got the boy. That, you know, there was... I, I'm not entirely sure I understand why. Was, like... Was he like the the opposite Jesus kind of thing, the, the you know the Antichrist kind of thing, where it was basically an immaculate conception, and it was the devil who you know got up in Roma's business, or I don't know, was it just just because she sold his soul to save her own life after jumping out of that building? I don't know. I anyway. So yeah, you know, he barely did anything, you know, he almost didn't need to be in the movie, or at least not for, you know, not until like near the end, when, you know, Kieran did one of, what, what must be one of the most embarrassing, embarrassing things of his career, you know, one thing is seeing this 13 year old kid, you know, doing the whole thing on his knees, but seeing Kieran Hines there also on his knees like that, yeah, that was, next time read the script first, dude, dude. The Rotting Kerrigan, so that was like the one thing he does do, you know, to, you gotta wonder why Kerrigan wasn't turned to ash, just like, everyone else that the writer came into contact with that yeah the script needed him to basically and you know the the rot thing did bring about one of the two good jokes in the entire movie i believe that is an accurate count the twinkie joke which wasn't too bad it the execution could have been better but the material was there certainly yeah, the, you know, the, the rotting thing was a cool enough idea. I didn't personally care for the visual thing they did with it, with, you know, like, isolating him with the victim in, like, darkness and that. Yeah, I don't know, didn't work for me, but it was fine. And... Didn't but but yeah. I didn't care for the white hair that really just and, and the entire the, the white thing. It just it wasn't a good look for him and it really wasn't very intimidating. And then there's the fact that that power is about the same as, you know, at least Blackheart, but maybe every supernatural villain character in the first movie. I don't remember exactly if the Hidden could do it too, but I think they could. Anyway, certainly Blackheart, so yeah, you know, basically it's just that, you know, it's just cooler done in this movie. So Johnny Blaze gets rid of the rider in a scene not at all reminiscent of Luke facing Vader in, you know, that one room of the cave, you know, you, what is in there? Only what you bring yourself, you know, so, yeah, and in, you know, in what can only be described as great luck, it evidently takes only a couple of minutes because, you know, right after he leaves, they're still only about to cut the head off Danny. You know, personally, I'd put that on the top list of my priorities if I knew he might be the devil. But, yeah, it it took them long enough. You know, they, you know, Blaze have, has time for wine and, you know, an exorcism, I guess. And, yeah. One thing I do like is that they did actually address that it's like it takes him over. You know, I guess they say that in the first movie, but there's not really any negative, like, there were really no repercussions. You know, it's not like he wakes up and it's like, 
what did I do kind of thing, you know. In this one, it plays out uh, not like uh, the mask or something, you know, it's like, was that really me and can I control this and that whole thing. And I sort of liked the thing about, you know, it could attack anyone because there's evil in all of us. But then they had to go and do the really hokey thing of lighting out on the audience and, you know, basically, you know, say, you better be watching this movie, you know, in a theater and, you know, you better not have downloaded any movies, including this one, anytime recently. Yeah, that was just... If they had at least done it with the flames, it might have slightly worked, but they did it with, like, lantern light, like, interrogation lamp kind of thing. That really, that was just stupid. Yeah. For some reason, you know, the writer didn't do the penance stare in this movie at all. I don't know, I guess someone told him that it was not very polite. So, yeah, that might just about cover it. I thought that the, you know, I'm not much into motorcycles, and in this movie I thought it was more tolerable when they showed off the bike than in the first movie. So they're near the end. I guess the rider can now resurrect people, like Danny had died from the crash and he resurrected him with his touch. You know, he's already invincible and thus a pretty dull character. You're really sure you want to add more superpowers? And then there's the whole thing about how by the end of the film they're like, ooh, one big happy family, sort of, I guess, or at least it's, it's possible that that's what will, you know, happen. The... You know, that that one bit in the restaurant where, you know, Blaze sees the, you know, the kid wants, you know, his hair to be touched by Daddy. And, like, you know, he does it too, and then, you know, he says, no, 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 I thought there was a bee, you know. You might think that that's just a poor excuse, but anyone who's watched Wicker Man knows how Cage feels about bees. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.